got a bunch of classes and a couple certificates you can get in cybersecurity. And what I want to do now is just as to show you why it's fun, I just want to show you a few nasty hacks. So I put up a website here. Um, I have several servers in the cloud, and I have some that are there just to get hacked. And this is one of them. And I renamed it Demo because one of the attacks I'm going to show you, I'd rather not have the whole world doing it to me all the time. So I'm going to remove that word demo after this demonstration if my server goes down too much. But anyway, um, the main thing I want to show you is the most important web vulnerability in the world. Uh, this is the one responsible for 99% or so of all stolen data ever, which is SQL injection. If you only know one thing about security, this should be it. It is the most important vulnerability in the world. And it's not just me saying that, the OWASP says the same thing, and you'll see why. So if you have a website, and it lets people type in stuff and get responses, like login or search or anything, so you can search for things, like I can search for C percent, and it'll give me the users whose name starts with C. Okay, so it found this guy named Chunk. This is a database full of nonsense that I didn't write, but it's up here as demo. So, but if you put in it an apostrophe here, and submit it, you get an error message saying there's an error in your syntax. Now this is in fact the end of the world. Uh, this means that your website is vulnerable for people to do anything they want to it. Because after the apostrophe I can put in commands and the commands will execute. So I can put commands in the name and they'll run on the server. I have to make the commands in SQL though, but what most people do is they don't bother to do it by hand, they use an attack tool and this is a tool the name Havij is an attack tool that's free on the internet, and it does all this attack for you. So all you have to do is find the website, like this one here, and search for, say, X. And now you can see up in the query, this goes to a PHP page, and then it has a uh, question mark Q equals X. That is typically the way PHP works, and PHP is famous for being vulnerable and getting you hacked all the time. And this is one of the many things that tends to happen when you make websites with PHP. Um, so what this does is you just put the URL in the tool. You don't have to adjust anything. Then you say analyze. It now checks to see if the server is vulnerable. Now, I, I got the wrong URL up there, so let me fix it. I got search2 instead of search1. And I guess there. Now it's going to let me change it. All right. There. Let's try this one. All right, and now at the bottom, it tells you the results, which hopefully it'll cough up the answer. Oh, there we go. All these happy blue and green letters tell you that it found a vulnerability. And so this is um, all you have to do is now hit tables, and it will tell you what tables uh, DDBs. It'll tell you what databases exist on the server. There's various ones, but there's one here called SQLOL. Then I get tables. And for that one, see, there we are. There's a table called SSN and a table called users. Then I get columns. And something seems to follow up on me. Let's shrink this down. Tables, all right. SSN, users. Um, that's tables, all right. Then columns. There we are. That's what I wanted to show you. Now there's a table called SSN, and it's got names and social security numbers. And you just click Get Data, and you get all the data. And that's how easy it is. This is how um, Anonymous hacked everybody, Sony, um, the US military, uh, Amazon. Well, I don't think they got Amazon. They got um, so Sony 30 times. They got PBS. When they hacked PBS, I got mad, and I got involved in stopping them. But anyway, it is very easy with these tools, even if you don't know much of anything, to commit enough felonies to get a nice 10-year prison sentence. And anyway, so don't be doing this on servers. But anyway, so if you want to fix this problem, you might want to be less vulnerable. So what you do is you alter your code. Now here's an example of a less vulnerable page. All I've done here is a very common fix. I've added one line. Here comes the query from the user. Before I use it, I run it through this thing called MySQL Real Escape String. And that is not really intended for this purpose, but it does remove apostrophes. And that does not make you completely safe, but it makes you safer. It stops automated attack tools like Havij. So this one is search two. And if I try to do search two up here and analyze it, it's going to investigate it and then give me unhappy red messages down here saying I can't figure out how to get in because this tool isn't smart enough to exploit it in these conditions. So 
That's the point. Unfortunately, developers typically are not taught to make safe pages. They're taught to make the same mistakes every previous generation of developers made. And uh, this particular vulnerability has been around for 15 years. And in that time, we've had a lot of education and training, and we've managed to take it. Originally, only 11% of the web was vulnerable. And now after 15 years of vigorous training, 11% of the web is still vulnerable. We're getting nowhere. Because every time somebody wises up and fixes it, some new guy graduates from school and puts up another website the same wrong way. They're doing what their teacher gave them an A for. They're doing what the textbook told them to do. Because for some unknown reason, there are two separate disciplines. There's developers and security. And they don't work together. We hire developers to write dangerous websites. Then we hire security people to clean them up. It's job security for all of us. But it doesn't seem entirely logical. So anyway, so suppose I fix this page and this bad guy can't get in anymore. Well, they might decide to get mad. So I can tell how my server's doing with the server status page. And there you are, that's an Apache server, the most common one in the world. And it's just got one person using it with a W there. Um, let me move this up on the screen so it's easier to see. There we are. So here's one person connecting. All right, now refresh my page comes back and I've still got only one person connected. Um, all right, so if you don't like that web page, you can just take it down. Um, here's the HTTP attack tool from OWASP. And if you just run this attack, then if I refresh this, it will be slower to respond, but it should respond at least once. Uh, die. Then again, maybe I've got to stop the attack to even reload that once. All right, let's cancel the attack, see if I can get connected again. Yes. Yeah, I may have done, been too vigorous. This tends to happen to my students too, although I thought I had that one slow enough. Um, this attack will bring down a server and keep it down as long as you keep sending the packets. Uh, Apache was told about it years ago and they chose not to fix it. Um, but it's a, you can send a series of requests, this thing will fill right up. It's not working now, but I'm not gonna bother with it because I got another thing to show you. So those, those are insecurities of websites. And another fun thing is insecurity of apps on your phone. Now, as you can imagine, if you think about it, you have your smartphone, you put on these apps, you go to the app and log in and update your Facebook and everything, you have no way to tell what it's doing, whether it's safe or not. You don't even get, if you're on your computer, you get a little bit of a clue. Um, if you go up here and look to see if that's HTTPS or not. That gives you some clue whether it's secure, although almost nobody looks at that and pays attention. But in Android apps, you don't even get that. So here, for example, is Stitcher. Stitcher is a music app of some sort, and you can log in with your name and password. So if I type in a password like P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, and I send that up to the server, uh, you might wonder, what did it do? Did it just send that password in a way anybody could steal it, or did it encrypt it and make it safe? And you have no way to tell. So I'm passing this through BERT, which is a tool that lets me examine the requests. Here's the request that went to Stitcher, and it's not HTTPS, it's HTTP. Now this is a fairly common result, so there's no obvious encryption in it. Here it is sending up my name and password, but the password appears to be encrypted. It's strange stuff there. This is a very common mistake in the world of computing, is to invent your own cryptography. Instead of just using the standard thing, which is HTTPS, which all the mathematicians and everybody in the world have worked really hard on, they chose to make their own cryptography. And I thought you might like this. It's good audience participation. We're going to reverse engineer Stitcher. So if you log in with a password of A, you get, it sends up 2x. So A becomes 2x. Let's try B. Oh, wow. That's right. <laughs> you, all right, you send up B. Here's the authentication. It's 2Y. Perhaps some of you are beginning to suspect a, a pattern here. What do you think will happen if I put in C? That, it would seem that way, wouldn't it? And yet, if you look in the terms of service, I'm sure they have the usual statement that they employ commercially reasonable uh, security measures to protect you. And this is their commercially reasonable number. I found this like four years ago, and I notified them, and in response, they made their system even weaker. Because people, most people just have no awareness at all. In fact, you're lucky if they don't try to prosecute you for telling them they have a vulnerability. Uh, very few of them actually give you prizes and t-shirts and stuff if you tell them about a vulnerability, but most of them have no idea what you're talking about, couldn't care less. 
They're just totally out to lunch. So, you know, this is a huge problem, especially on Android phones. Your apps are just doing awful things. The customers don't know. The people that are purchasing the apps don't care. The developers don't know. And everybody just goes on. As long as it looks pretty, everyone thinks it's fine for a while. And then they wonder how to get hacked. Anyway, I thought I'd show you a few of those things. Um, and there's a whole bunch of classes that teach you all this stuff. And of course, everybody and their brother is hiring in security jobs. Because uh, since the government cannot protect us, the way the police protect us in the real world on the internet, everybody has to hire their own security officers. Any questions? Okay, well, good, glad you're happy. All right, I'll get out of the way and pass on to the next person. Let me just turn off the recording, which is uh, the hood.